here's the lower piece that uh, basically is done now. Once again, after I got done doing all the colors that you saw, I went ahead and cut some really thin strips with a sharp X-Acto knife and, of course, a nice stainless steel ruler to get it real straight and thin um, strips of this uh, gold bare metal foil. I carefully applied them, which was a lot of work because, uh, you know, you got to wrap each one around each of the uh, pipes to get it strategically the way you want. Um, I had better photos of the upper piece that I had done prior to showing you this uh, lower piece, but uh, I just kind of went off of, you know, similar to what I did with the other one. But uh, there's all of the uh, bare metal foil pieces applied, the gold bare metal foil. Maybe a little too thick on the welds, but it's effective. It's, it's the way I want it. Now, like I told you, the last thing that I did after I got done putting all these pieces of foil on here and burnishing them down nice and tight was I went over all of the, the welds with this paneline accent, which gives you that little bit of a dark faded color on the edges of the gold foil. So that's my exhaust. I mean, they're both, they're, they're both done. Let me uh, kind of pull them up here so you can see them. But that's my version of the of, of a, a set of nice and heated titanium MotoGP exhaust. So here's where we're at. Let me uh, lift this up and show it to you. And we'll I'll describe what's been done since the last video with the exhaust. But let's get a nice little close-up here. Of course... It's nice having it on this moto jig because uh, I don't have to worry about Marco Moto design jig because I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. It's it's nice and solid, so I can I can sit here and handle it without even having to touch the body of the of the bike, which is nice. But there's a close up of the front fork. Now I use the the detail set, the Tamiya front fork detail up set, which gives you the brass turned uh, forks and the small reservoirs there for the uh, for the shocks. Kit calipers, of course, but uh, I added quite a bit of detail to this, as you can see. The, uh, what I believe is the wheel speed sensor or suspension travel, as I've been corrected before, um, is the smaller wire. Now, what that's made out of is just good old stretch magic clear tubing. The brake line itself I noticed on the uh, Repsol bike is a braided line with a clear tube over it. And I thought, gee, what can I use to simulate that? And what I ended up using is fishing leader line, which is this stuff. It's a braided line that has a clear plastic coating over it. Now, this stuff is stiff. It's almost like guitar string. So you've got to really muscle it around and kind of kink it and bend it to get it to shape the way you want. But it does work. Let me, uh, since I haven't actually glued this piece on, you know, the front cowl piece with the glass and everything done, since I haven't glued that on yet, actually it's not going to get glued on because what holds it in is the side cowls. It's removable on the bike. You get a closer up view of the brake lines. The rotors are the kit rotors, um, painted with Tamiya enamel gunmetal and Tamiya enamel metallic gray. And, uh, of course, the calipers are done with, uh, I believe, X31, which is the titanium silver, or titanium gold, I believe is what it is, with the Brembo decals on there. I use Detail Master number three AN fittings for the actual brake line itself, the connector, and I painted the lower part anodized blue, which is exactly the way that the, uh, the bike was on the one-to-one -one bike. You can really, again, see the really nice carbon fiber on the front fender. Came out really nice. Gravity color is clear. And, of course, everything else throughout. Now, what I love about the bike is the front uh, top of the forks. That was painted with a mixture of gunmetal, or should I say metallic gray, and um, gold to give it that goldish cast gray look to it. Did the same thing on the, uh, on the fuel cap per instructions. All the decals are on it, of course. Everything's clear-coated, polished. Seat was done with uh, Tester's flat black lacquer spray.
and then you see the rest of the bike. Everything else has been polished. You can see the uh, detail on the side. All the carbon fiber pieces for the air intake were done with Scale Motorsport twill weave. Plain weave on some of those parts there. High def weave on the, the carbon fiber around the clutch flywheel. And of course you can see the really cool looking exhaust with the gold foil and all that setting it off. Really pleased with how it came out so far. And of course if you look up under there you can see the exhaust as well. So it's a nice view of that. With the Top Studio oxygen sensors right there on the bottom of the exhaust all hooked up. Plumbed with their kit. And of course the rear fender in plain weave, 124 scale. Scale Motorsports carbon fiber weave. So overall really pleased with the bike. Let me flip it over so you can see the other side of the bike. I'd like to show it off here for you. All the carbon fiber work on the rear frame that I've documented during the uh, during the build. The chain is the kit one, just carefully painted with gold and highlighted with some black accents. There's your chain guard right there, which is carbon fiber high def weave. Where the carbon on the swing arm, lower part, and the chain guard inside the rear swing arm is plain weave, dot weave carbon fiber. So I use a mixture of a lot of things. Here's some dot weave carbon on the, uh, on the uh, computer cover clusters, or whatever they call them. And of course there is a sensor right there that's Tamiya has you paint red, and I added a top studio small sensor with wire coming out of that just disappearing into the frame. So you'll see that on the edge when the cowlings are on. Bare metal foil for the uh, hose clamps. And of course on this side as well the air intake is done in twill weave 124 scale carbon fiber. Take a look at the uh, the straps on the uh, the grips that was made with really fine wire now that wire, I don't know the diameter of it, but it's super fine and it comes in the Top Studio detail sets and I had some extra left over, so that's what I've been using. And basically what you do is you wrap it around and carefully twist it and you don't see the twist unless you look at the bottom of the, uh, even there you can't really see it that much, but the bottom of the grips has the wire twisted so that it's nice and tight. And once again, there's the whole front uh, front fork area with the uh, turned aluminum or turned brass tops makes a huge difference over the plastic pieces a lot of the real shiny chrome look was accomplished with one of these jobbers right here which I think I mentioned that I've used these things are great this stuff is very um, very fragile I know some guys are coating it with Future, and it seems to work out for them. I haven't found where I can handle it that much without it really just dulling it up and having to reapply it. But putting it on parts that don't have to be handled, this stuff works great. And since I have this jig and don't have to handle the bike so much, all that chrome is, hold is holding up very nicely. I even did the end of the handlebar right there in that chrome, and it makes a big difference. So Gravity Colors came through again on all the uh, fluorescent orange, reds. Again, my wheels, as I discussed, big topic of discussion with a lot of guys. Um, some of them do them the same color as the, as the, uh, the bike tins. Myself and Matt Tay Meyer uh, agreed that we should go with a slightly off-color orange for the wheels per pictures that we've seen. I decided just to go that route, right or wrong. It looks good to me. So there's your bike overall so far. It's almost done, guys. Um, the only thing I have left to do on it now is apply the cowls, the lower cowl, the front cowl, get it all screwed together, add some photo etch hardware in certain areas like the back of the bike here where the uh, I got to put some Zeus fasteners across here. I haven't decided whether I'm going to leave them just regular photo etch or actually paint them to match because I think it's just the, the round pop-up fastener that's silver and then the outside plate the oval plate is body color. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to accomplish that. I may not do that. I may just put them on and see how they look in bare form. But uh, i got to put the cowlings on it, uh, the front cowl. I've got the rear camera to apply and just some very various photo etch and such. And one last thing I'll have to do is the shifter um, shaft that goes right here. 
uh, right on the side of the bike where, where it goes to the transmission to shift it. Um, I'm going with the top studio piece, which is a turned aluminum piece. I'm going to try to see if I can get the drill a hole in the side of it and push that little sensor through it as well to really set it off. So, um, hope you enjoyed it so far. Next time you see the bike, it'll be in the final photos. I really enjoyed doing the video with you guys. I hope it was informative. Like I said, I know I don't do a how-to step-by-step. Um, I don't want to bore you guys or not even bore you guys, but just, you know, it's it's very, very time-consuming doing these videos as it is, so I hope you appreciate getting what you get here on these. Um, drop me a line and let me know what you think. Again, you can also reply to the, uh, to the video, but here we are so far. Next uh, time you see it, it'll be a final shoot, probably of just the completed bike in a series of photos. Uh, so thanks for watching. Tune in next time for the next video, which we'll be announcing real soon. Thanks.